Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Um, it is a Monday morning at 11 a.m. PST. Um, where is everybody? Where are you all? Well, see, we have Mark. Mark, I believe you're in um, Deutschland in Germany. Um, Kyle, hi, Kyle. Hi, Chris. Hi, Eric. Hey, Hans. What a great name. Hans, Hans van der Boom. Kitty Fisher. Hey, Kitty. Uh, da, 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 da. Chris. Hey, Chris Ibbotson. Chris uh, Werner or Werner, depending on where you are. Uh, Bill Hawkins. Hey, Bill. Hey, Wolfgang, uh, Manfred, Tom, Nick, Nicholas, Jack, Sam, Silvano, Christian, uh, Ray, Mike DeCamp, David Harris, uh, Andre, Mark K, Jens, Christoph, Mark Balder. Ho, Mark. Hi, Kev. Hey, Rick Bell. Hey, Rhett James. Wow, this is pretty awesome. Edward. Hey, Edward. Nikki, Kenneth. You know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. We're gonna do um, obviously, we'll do some giveaways. By the way, for academy academy membership, if you're not already a member, um, and if you are a member, you'll get a year's extension. Um, so we'll do some of that as well. But let's get let's get down to the chase. So what this is is every week um, on Fridays inside of the academy, we do what is called Feedback Friday, and we didn't do it. We did it inside of the Academy this last Friday, and typically we might do one live every now and then. But what we thought we would do is do an extra one this week. So there'll still be a Friday one for all the Academy members here. Hello. So we'll still do that. Um, but it's going to be pre-recorded because I'm going to go on holiday. What? Yes, I'm going on holiday. So, but we wanted to do a live one, and we also wanted to demonstrate to all the lovely uh, um, folks out there in YouTube land what we do inside of the Academy. And what we do is this. We listen down to people's mixes, and it sort of falls into two categories. So we have the weekly one where we'll do multi-tracks that are supplied by the Academy, which I think we're currently up to about 100 and something mixes something like that. And so there's like a hundred multi-tracks in there, but then we also do members mixes. And did you do this as a combination? There are two of our mixes in here and then the rest of our... Okay, so what this one is eight productions, engineers and mixing done by Academy members, which we also critique. We do that once a month. So we're going to do a little extra one here. So with two of our own mixes, meaning two of these were done... Uh, are multi-tracks that are supplied, and the other eight are actually from members inside. So I think that makes it quite unique because then we get stuck in, and because it's called Produce Like a Pro, it's not all about the mixing. We, we talk about the production, we talk about the songwriting, the performances, as well as the mixing, and we have a lot of fun. So this is typical. You've got all these people in the chat. Um, they're, they're in the chat here. Hey, Tom. Hi, Anita. Um, and... What they will do is, while we'll listen to the song, they will also critique. And also, you'll get to see what the process is like. Okay, so let's go to the little the little view of me. Enough enough full screen of Warren. Let's, uh, let's go to that. And now what we do is we go to the Academy. So this is the Academy. This is the forum. And inside of the forum, you see yesterday somebody uh, put up of submission and then people get in and give advice and pretty vibrant as you can see so jeff uh vigras or vigras from twin spruce spruce studios who has been in the academy a while are you here are you here tim says first ever plap submission i hope i'm doing this right you did blame it on the whiskey robert john on the wreck Hello, all bare bones mix I threw together about 18 months ago, having just joined the Academy. Trying to keep the live feel, no automation used. This is mix is not mastered. Any comments welcomed and encouraged. And then what happens is Mike Bembo got in and helped. So did Mark Beeson, more Mike Bembo, Nicholas, Roy, Eric, uh, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's go in there and check it out. So here is... Jeff from Twin Spruce Studios. Blame it on the whiskey. Blame it on the whiskey. Blame it on a bad week. Blame it on the only thing you've ever seen. 
run and tell your mother Blame it on your brother Blame it on the only thing you've ever heard It's very. It's a very raw sounding track. Now, a bunch of different things. Um, I've been reading the comments, and there's some really, really good commentary going on here. Very, very useful and helpful. So, thank you for doing that. So, for me, this song is a very live song. Um, the band, everything was tracked live. We actually did an album with them in a day at Sunset Sound. The whole album. I can't remember if it was ten or twelve songs, but anyway, we did the full tracking all the instrumentation, then we did some vocal overdubs and a couple of guitar solo overdubs, where you hear more than two guitars playing at once, that's because we did an overdub. Otherwise, all the rhythm, all the lead parts, the bass and the drums and the keys were all off the floor and some of the vocals. So pretty pretty amazing. So with that in mind and the spirit of it and the way the band are, you do want to inherently keep the live feel. And I do believe that um, Jeff has done that. Now, the things that could be better and that people are talking about is there needs to be a little bit more of an immediacy on the drums. At the moment, it feels like room mics are, you know, 60% of the mix. 
I'm not going to say it's a fully room mic. Of course not. It, it isn't. I know the Sunset Sound room mics very well, and that is not that. But what I will say is, you know, I want a more of an immediacy on the snare and the kick in particular, obviously. The toms actually are quite loud. At the end, the toms could come down. There's a fill uh, there. I mean, they're sitting like 3 dB above everything else. So it's really a kick and snare thing. Um, so for me, starting with the kick is I want some more snap to it. So in a non-metal world, that's about 2.5K-ish, around about 2.5. In a more heavy rock metal world, that's like 7K and above. That's like a more really super bright. But in this... 2.5. I know some people do like a little 1.5 bump just for energy. But yeah, 2.5, 3K, a little bit of snap on the kick. But also, we need to add some low lows. We need to get a little bit of a subbiness to it. It doesn't have to be massive because this is a classic rock track. And we have to remember we're not doing modern metal or EDM where we've got like a this massive, massive kick. But a little, um, you know... Um, uh, a little bit of ex extra like low lows on there would be really, really cool. So what I would do, depending on what you've got, is I use like the Waves R bass. It can be really good for that. There's a lot of different plugins that can add some subbiness. But before you do any of that, I would literally just go into your EQ setting on your kick. And I'm talking about all three elements being bussed together. And then just go in there and boost like 60 hertz and the 40 will come up with it. But when you're pulling it up, make sure you tuck down a bit of the 80 to 100 area so you're not excessively boosting that because that will smother the um, that will smother the low end of the bass guitar, which you don't want to do. You want to bring up the low lows of the kick without smothering the bass guitar area. And the bass really shines in that 80 to 100 area. It's really blooming and just helps glue the kick and the bass guitar together. So more low lows on the kick more snappiness to the kick, I would be looking at about the 2.5 area, just a little boost in there. And the next thing is brightening that snare. Because the snare, the, the snare at the moment just sounds like I'm really hearing, like I said, 60% room mics. I want a more immediate snare sound. So typically, you know, 7K and above, a nice gentle slope, because it will start pulling up other areas as well. The drums in general are a little boxy because of the room mics. So I would go to the room mics and just cut a little bit more 350 low mids out of it. And if you've got a whole drum mix going on on a pair of faders, you know, on a, on a stereo fader, just a, you have a look at pulling out a little tiny bit more low mids. But don't try to do things on a global level yet. Try to get into individual elements like the room mics, the overheads, and the toms in particular, pulling out some of that low mid buildup. So by the time it gets to the drum bus, it's a little brighter, a little bit fuller. So more attack on the, uh, on the, um, on the snare, which is really going to be a 7K lift and above. Great. Those are my main, main things. And I think the drum mix will make everything sort of come into place. I was funny. I was driving over talking to Michael Stucker, who's a very good friend of mine who teaches um, uh, recording arts at IU, Indiana University. And we were talking about how we both do mix critiques and he does it in exactly the same way as me. It's like you've got to think globally. Yeah. Think globally. So a quick listen. So you can hear that. That snare is just like clock, 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 clock. It doesn't have that kind of like boofiness to it. I, I would be happy to add like a 150, 200 on the low end of the snare as well as a big 7K boost. And I think in general, once you've got that drum sound just a little bit more bombastic, a little bit more in your face, a little bit more of the close mics coming through, you're going to want to get into automation, like pulling up those little kind of guitar parts, just a gnats. Like, have a listen to this section, for instance. Like just that, and to me, I would get that a little wider. 
it's a little too centered. It is to the left, and it's probably about 20, 30 percent on the left, maybe even as much as 40. But maybe go even a little bit wider. Because if you can get it out of the center, you can pull it up a little bit, add some ear candy element to it, you know, but it's out of the way of the vocal, which is coming down the center. The vocal itself could do with a bit of automation. A lot of the time, it's absolutely perfect. Sometimes it gets a little lost. So just tuck it up. You're in a world now with like classic rock tracks like this. I mean, obviously, this is a new young band, but they are a classic rock band. Um, and the way to think about it is like you need, we need to sort of like have one foot in the past, but one foot definitely in the present slash future, which means it's got to sound a little bit brighter, a little bit fuller, a little bit more low end to it than would have been on the original 70s style recordings. In the 70s, because of vinyl, we weren't able to reduce, uh, sorry, produce those low lows. They weren't reproduced, I should say. So what would happen is, you know, my friends like Jack and Jay and Shelly, Shelly in particular would tell me that, you know, he'd mix with a ton of low end on the kick. But in the mastering stage, it would get wiped off because the vinyl couldn't handle it. So you know, the stylus would just jump out. Or if it could handle it, you the grooves were wider and deeper, so you couldn't get as much music on the side of a vinyl. So you, if you had a big low end, which is why reggae, if you remember early, early reggae, was all done on 12-inch singles, because they wanted to be able to like have the low lows. So they would release it on a 12-inch rather than a 7-inch. If you bought it on a 7-inch, it had no low end on it. You couldn't put the... Because the grooves couldn't be wide enough. So with all that in mind... If you if you re mixed it the way an original 70s recording was, meaning like just a like a kick that's more like that and not oof, it's going to feel old fashioned, but not in a good way, because we have a memory of music from when we were kids based on on how we on how we remember something, not how it actually is, because now when you're walking around and you're going in and out of stores, shops, you know, the PA systems in those stores is like second to none compared with what it used to be when I was a kid. And everything was like, you know, it was like this dreadful sounds of this mono little crappy speaker probably coming off an AM radio or something. So now you want to have a nod to the past and but a foot in the present slash future. So a little bit more low lows, a little bit brighter on the drum mix. So it just bites more automating those guitar parts but getting them out of the center so they're not smothering the vocal and then automating the vocal itself where it gets a bit lost um the organ i kind of like the organ you could make it a little bit more bitey i suppose um andy um you know oh sorry that's raw of the tiger i don't know who that was so i thought it was andy um you know maybe maybe a little bit and you could automate it just a little bit it is a matter of taste, but I do agree, you could always put a little bit more high mid boost on it. Everybody's moving on your growing shoulder. So blame it on the whiskey. I mean, Midi Man, I mean, it says uh, this track sounds like pop country, not rock to me. I think if you go back to 70s rock, this just fits in it. It's just in a modern way now. Modern country is there. They're, they're, they're leaving off from where rock left off in the 90s. Like There's tracks now that if you, cl if you muted the vocal, I mean, some of the producers like Joey Moy, you know, did Nickelback records and now he's doing country. And if you mute the vocal, you've got a Nickelback track, but you've got, um, which, but you've got a modern country, you know, singer. And that's what happens now. You know, this is very 70s rock. But at the same time, and I'm not talking British 70s rock, I'm talking American 70s rock, which has southern country, it's southern rock. Um, but nowadays, that's what modern country, a lot of modern country sounds like. So they're not, they, they don't dislike country, but for them, they're, they're listening to the Allman Brothers. That's their reference. Those kinds of bands. Okay. All right. Next up, great work, by the way, Jeff. And thanks ever so much for giving us uh, that track. Next up is Kyle and... Um, and uh, doesn't look like there's any notes. But thank you, Carl, for sending. And it his his version of the Andy Palmer song, Colfax. What's interesting about this track is it has a lot of very, very organic elements. Very organic elements. We've got hip-hop tracks in here. We've got metal tracks. We've got pop tracks. We've got country. But this one is 
quite a challenge to mix because it's very, very organic. Again, this one has people in a room playing together. This is a very off the floor performance. Down a couple doors No one who mess with me now The twisted hang on fine And polished gangster leans The old busted tooth Fairies on the scene Believe what you want But she's been down here for weeks She's got two gold caps on her back where wings had been. <laughs> no one will mess with her now. Sooner or later, you best choose which side you're on. Wow. I mean, firstly, thank you ever so much for doing that song. Um, huge, huge fan of Andy Palmer. Um, I, I don't know why he's not huge. I mean, he's like Tom Waits, but even more realer. Yeah, because he really is that guy. Um, wonderful, wonderful human being. Um, he is a uh, he's a lawyer um, and his wife is also a lawyer and they... Um, He's got songs written about defending people that are just so fantastic. He's really a wonderful, wonderful human being and a, and a great father. And his music is amazing. So that's a very, very difficult song to mix. 
I, if you're an Academy member, if you're not, join the Academy. Download the Andy Palmer tracks. That Just to give a little bit of history, is that was recorded on tape. It was recorded on an A80 and transferred to Pro Tools. So it is a tape recording. And what was interesting about this is I had we had an old uh, assistant here, um, and I asked him to recall the mix on the console. I've told this story many times, Academy members are glazing over, but if you're not in the Academy, you know what I mean. So he, he recorded it on the, assist, uh, on, on the console, and I came back in the studio and said, oh, we're ready to go on that. And he's like, yeah, but there's a problem. I was like, what is it? He's like, listen to this. And he soloed one of the tracks, and of course he heard, Tss. and he's like, I think there's a problem with it. And I was like, I was like, that's tape hiss. <laughs> and I just realized that it's been so many years. I mean, when, when I moved, when I well, obviously starting in England, I, in the UK, everything was tape. And then I got into ADAT. So when I moved here, I had ADAT. But when I started making albums as a musician, uh, for instance, in the late 90s in America, um, it was still tape transitioning into Pro Tools. You'd record it on tape and transfer into Pro Tools. And, and the first record I did here was entirely on, on tape. But I realized that there is nobody doing that anymore. Sorry, this isn't tightened up. Um, there's no, that, that just is not, you know, if you're 25 or younger now, you're not going to have that experience at all. Um, that's just not going to happen. Well, I think that's been losing its grip. Oh dear. Oh dearie, dearie me. Well, that's not good. That's not good. I'm holding up the uh, holding up the mic here. It's probably been over tightened one too many times. Well, I'm going to hold the mic at the moment um, till the mic stand magically appears. <laughs> so um, anyway, to cut a long story short. The um, Andy Andy stuff is just absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and so I highly, highly recommend that you, if you're not haven't already, please check out his stuff. Um, I am trying to tighten this up. Do 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 do. This is quite amusing, except for me. Um, deary, deary me! I just it just died on me in the middle of uh, talking. No, it's not a K and M. If this was a, this, this is a, a a cheap one we've had for several years, so we're bringing in a new stand. But what we'll do is we'll change it out when we're listening to a track. But anyway, so let's get into the mix. I actually love the mix. It's quite um, it's quite different to the way I mixed it. Yeah, my mic drop. That's my mic drop, Kitty. So the way I would have mixed it, it was definitely less um, reverb on it. So you can hear like a lot of verb on that snare. I wouldn't have mixed it like that, but I like it. And one of the things we like to talk about in the Academy is there's no one way to do it. And sometimes people will take mixes and they will make them more in your face, more aggressive, more compressed, more louder, more hit you over the head. And it can work if done really, really well. And then other times people do the exact opposite and they go super live and they let everything breathe. And the point is, is like you can mix in multiple different ways and people will come to you for your style just because, you know, there's endless tutorials on using the same drum, drum, you know, samples and the same this and the same that, which is that the great, a great mixer will understand and a great producer will understand how to serve the song. And the best way often to serve the song, well, not often, always to serve the song, is to find the essence of the song and bring that out, rather than just going, that's my sound, man. You know, I, I, I actually worked with a mixer once where I was like, I, that snare just sounds really synthetic. And they said to me, that's my sound. And... Trust me, I mean, you've all heard like records where it's the same drum sound on every single song. And then you find the mixer and then you listen to like 10 albums that they've done in that last year or two. And every snare is like, bat, 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 
bap, bap. Doesn't matter if it's like a blues song. It's bap, bap, bap. Doesn't matter if it's metal. It's bap, bap, bap. You know, it's the same thing. What is really unique here is like we help. Um, <laughs> Mika says, serve the song first, serve cocktails later. Um, you know, so what, what we're doing here is we're encouraging like individuality and most importantly, creativity. So let's listen a little bit and talk. So there's a big there's a big verb on it, but I really like it. I like it. It's good. It sounds really good. I start on sixth, land at York and Maine. Some... Jennifer Lane says this song has such a New Orleans uh, um, influence to it. It does. It definitely has that kind of really. Yeah, yeah, and that was a big influence of mine, and Andy's as well, obviously. I start on sixth, land in York and Maine. Now, a couple of people said they thought the vocals a little dry. I love it. I love the immediacy. Um, oh, and there you go. And Dave Cruz says the, the the dry vocal juxtaposed with the reverb snare really works. I agree. I for me quite often in mixing as I, I I want a visual component. So for me, I almost feel like the video is Andy walking up to the mic and the camera is right on his face singing, and the band are sort of in the background in this in this big room and there's an immediacy to it. It's like when his vocal comes in, the way that Kyle has mixed this is super dry and it just speaks to you. I start on sixth, land at York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of sane. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I am for. Love still lives here just down a couple. I don't know if there is a video, Kitty. Uh, what I was meaning is when I mix often, I try in my mind, I have create a visual of what I want it to be. So for me, this mix in particular would be that really dry, the singer right in your face with the band kind of back a bit. But I like it. A couple of people talked about taming the acoustic, um, which may be at the end. Let's have a listen. Choose me. Kind of like it to be honest. Choose me, I your own. Sooner or later, you best choose. Now, I believe this is a stand-up bass, which makes it very, very difficult to mix. Stand-up basses are notorious for having, like, you know, you've heard of the wolf tones, where certain sounds just go crazy. You can be like boom, 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 and this note just blows up out of nowhere. And depending on the skill of the player and proper mic placement, this can be a big issue or not an issue, hardly an issue at all. But either way, upright basses, stand-up basses, contrabasses, whatever you want to call it, um, acoustic basses, you know, they definitely are more of a challenge to mix. Uh, I know with one of our live recordings that we did at Sunset Sound a few years ago, the one with, I think we did with Daryl Thorpe, that everything is live in a room, and that's been a really big challenge. So if you go into the Academy, you'll see those multi-tracks, which was Steve Magora singing and playing piano. The whole thing was recording live, so live vocals, live piano. Now, don't get me wrong. Not everything we do is live. Um, it's just been that these references they are uh, we're doing at the moment is like that. So I think that Carl did a wonderful job of taming the bass. And they look down on the world through tiny little holes. So say what you will, you've been seen here. For me, the snare's almost perfect. I miss a bit of body. I hear a lot of psh, psh, um, you know, um, I hear a bit of body. Yeah, uh, Ferdinando, yes. Al was great recording upright. Um, I think he used 47s and or maybe M49s. I don't remember now off the top of my head. I'd have to check. But regardless, he was all about it. any compression was gentle, but also about moving fader. So, you know, he would control that, you know, he control that by just pulling and pushing it, you know. Well, the police put eyes upon 
a telepole And they look down on the world Through tiny little holes So say what you will You've been seen here before So for me, a little bit more body on the snare on something like this, on this kind of genre, I would grab a Poltex style EQ and actually boost 100 hertz. Now, the bottom end of the snare is going to be more like between 150 and 200. But the reason, and I learned this from Jack Douglas and Dave Jordan and stuff like that, was to always boost below where you wanted it to be because it would then produce a nice gentle slope. You get this slope as opposed to often when you go in on an EQ, you might want to hear more, more 150, 200 on a snare, but if you just go in on 200 and boost it, it can just kind of go, oh, oh. it just sounds like it, it sounds, I hate this phrase, but I'm gonna use it, it sounds EQ'd. But if you go to about 100 on a Poltec on a snare drum and boost it with a nice wide boost, what will happen, so you're not gonna attenuate it, what will happen is it will pull up the 150 and 200 gently and bring body into the snare. And so I think I would do some of that, there's not, there's no problem with the amount of bottom snare, etc. you're getting, but I want a bit more body on there. Now the police put eyes up on the telepole And they look down on the world through tiny little holes So say what you will, you've been seen here before But we all got our reputations to uphold No one will mess with you now Absolutely love that solo. A couple people said they thought it was too loud. I actually like it being loud. I like a bit of the kind of the offensiveness of it. Um, we worked quite hard on, on that solo being great, you know, and getting the open string thing just makes it really scream and a little nasty when he's bending and you hear that little rub on the bends. All of that's deliberate. And I think that I, I like it like that. And being loud means that when you come back in, it's created some excitement. So for me, Carl, it's almost perfect. For me, body on the snare, but then now you've got to take a few minutes away from it, take a day or two away from it, but then come back in and look for ear candy, things, um, things that were um, to be like pushed up, you know. Um, like there's a little kind of keyboard riff here. You best choose, bitch. The burr, 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 on the on the keys there that could come up because there's no vocal going on in there so between that just da, burr, burr, da, you know it's yeah um airbud is asking if uh, it was boosted a little bit i think yeah pushing those pushing those sections pushing moments of ear candy would really help we talked about al schmidt earlier that's that's the al schmidt you know not doing much compression or eq but when you watch the console faders moving you know, he had the Neve at Capitol and you just go in there and you see all these faders dancing around because he's sitting in there and he's blending things and he's really using his ears and making decisions based on that. Um, great, great work. Really fantastic. All right, we'll get to the next one. Thank you, Kyle. Um, and now we're getting into some originals. So this is user um, mixes. So this is Adam. And Adam says, hey, everyone, it's my first time posting something here. So if I have done ro this wrong, please forgive me. You didn't. I decided to do a cover of the uh, Sereni. Uh, I had the vocals, but nothing else. I enjoyed recording, editing, and mixing, and mastering this track. So fantastic. So it looks like Adam did this entirely on his own. I, I, I believe it said I had the vocals, but nothing else. I'm assuming you had a vocal track, and then you tracked everything to it. I, I think you're saying you didn't sing it. Um. But either way, it looks like they did everything on it, that Adam did everything, recording, editing, mixing, and mastering. 
Very exciting indeed. Okay. And while we're listening, Eric is going to stealthily come in here and change out the mic stand so I'm not... Drooping. Drooping. All right. Press play. Here we go, Eric. Three, two, one, go. What a cool track. So once again, um, just to illustrate, we don't have a genre here. We mix all kinds of stuff. We produce all kinds of stuff. And there's obviously a massive emphasis on production as well as mixing. And I think in that respect, this is a track very specifically to talk about, uh, quite specifically to talk about production. Let's go back to the intro here. So mix-wise and probably production-wise, it's uh, the bass disappears. Um, it, it needs to be just a little bit more. It, it some notes are beautiful and they sit there, and other times it disappears. So the way the way we often do that is to use like R bass with an MV2. Um, you know, there's two Waves plugins that I use on every mix, and it's the R bass and the MV2. The MV2 allows you to take the low level information and bring it up. So you get quiet notes, you can push it up, and then some of the loud stuff and push it back together. <laughs> Mika's saying the kick is rubbing against the energy of the bass. It does happen occasionally. Here, Lee is comparing it to Alphaville, which makes sense.
So Art David says there's too many similar instruments, I think. I'm not entirely, I don't necessarily agree, but I, I understand your point. I mean, when you're dealing with using keys, um, you know, it's, it can be, this can happen if you're using a lot of mid-range driving instruments. But it often happens when you have like a key part like this and a guitar going on at the same time. For me, the vocal treatment is good, um, but it could be better. Um, I feel like I, I personally would compress this much heavier and automate it and make it just so it's just like there the whole time, like super in your face. That's what I would do. Peter's saying arrangement wise. Thank you, Tim. Yes, please hit the like button and we'll do a giveaway in a second as well. Um, yeah. I, I feel like the vocal could be just more omnipresent, just like compressed more, you know, artificially, like really obviously just like this the whole time. So it's like really in there. Then what you can do, because at the moment with the double, it, it it's a, rubs a little bit on the double and doesn't have a, it's going to be more Owl City. I know that's going back a few years, but remember Owl City about 10 years ago? Just like how the vocal was like really like this the whole time. That's what I think this song needs. And then I think to Peter's point, I would... Um, uh, I would, um, yeah, Nikki, you, you can send the tracks over. Obviously, we have to decide if it's if it's right for us to do. I mean, happy, please. We get a lot of submissions and things, but uh, we'll listen to the song and see if it's right. And and next, you know, maybe it'll go inside of the academy. Are you an academy member? Obviously, Nikki. Um, so the um, so yeah, muting um, mute, muting um, things. I think to Peter's point is that would be really smart. It's a little too continuous um it needs a little bit more interest and i agree i think muting dropping out instruments more dramatically would really really help so because that's the chorus lift there let's go to the pre-chorus some extra dsing as well it's a little So the bass is really the only thing that really drives it there when it goes that doom, 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 doom. and that's fine but you know maybe drop some instruments in the pre-chorus especially here like take out take out the um take out the synth take out the drum fill do something that gives us an opportunity for that chorus to lift Peter says, give us more of those wow moments uh, when all the stuff comes in. Exactly. You know, it's you don't have to go absolutely nuts and do reverse and explosions and stuff like that. But a judicious use of muting and automation would really, really, really help. Tom says, song needs more variety to it. I agree. I think there's a lot of really good things going on in here, Adam. Just get in there and sort of mute some stuff, bring the vocals more forward so that they've got more of the Owl City kind of things. Um, yeah, and Kitty's saying I'd like to hear a few more breaks. Otherwise, it's a great example. I mean, Adam, if you can, um, this is what a lot of Academy members do, is they give us the multi-tracks to add to uh, the Academy, and that allows people to mix it. So, Adam, if you could donate these multi-tracks, multi give them to um, eric at producelikeapro.com, he can put them up in there and other members can mix them. And it's great to have this kind of variety of stuff. So let's do our first, great work. So let's do our first giveaway. So this is for a year's membership to the Academy. If you're already a member, uh, you'll get a one-year extension. And, of course, if you're a lifetime member, which we have many, um, you can also um, – Peter says it's more of an arrangement thing than a mix. Exactly. That's what we talk a lot about, though. That's a big part of what we do here. Um, and if you're already a lifetime member, then you can go over to ProMix Academy and choose any course that you want there. All right. Dave Crew, Northern Quartet, is next. So the question is, what would be our question? For the giveaway, what would be our question? We've done. <laughs> what would be our question? We usually do. We've done like DAWs. We've done headphones. We've done microphones. I mean, they're all the things. All right. 
I've done this one before, but I like it. If there's one plugin in the entire world that you couldn't live without, what's your, what's the one plugin? What's your favorite plugin? For me, for me, it is um, actually it's two. It's the MV2 and the R Bass. I can mix. You could give me any any plugin by any manufacturer, any stock plugins, and I can mix really really well. But the two I would miss would be the M V2 and the R Bass. Now I love variety of plugins that that, uh, that Kirchhoff we just tried out was fantastic the even tide um, plug in the split EQ is phenomenal and I mean there's these are incredible Mac DSP's analog channel is incredible you saw me mix it with the other day put it on the backgrounds and it was like ah! it was like amazing what it did to those background vocals it was like it did everything it eq'd it pushed it in one place there's certain plugins like that that are amazing but gun to my head it would be the mv2 and the r bass yeah what are yours and this is at random there's no right answer just let us know oh sooth too yeah yeah is a miracle worker i agree um so let us know and then eric will pick somebody at random all right dave crew with Northern Quarter, let's have a quick read. Here's another original song from my band, Northern uh, Northern Quarter, called Train Hopper. This one features a gospel choir from Omnisphere, plus lots of vocal overdubs and a lovely uplifting trumpet part from a friend in the UK. Excellent! Let's check it out. Step back into the blind in the sunlight I've been running for days, running day and night I Try to change my hair, my clothes, my name I've been falling time in man It's the same Again, another great example of what Academy members do. We got these incredible Academy members that that write and record and produce these this kind of music. And there's 2,500 people in there, and it's insane how much talent there is in there. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of people come in barely being able to record or mix anything, and they grow. They grow so fast because there's so many people that are helpful. We get lots of member collaborations. We get places where there's drummers inside the academy that will play on other people's tracks. 
We have a sax player in there, Michael Garding. And you hear Michael, who's one of the greatest sax players. Um, and he plays sax on people's material. There is songwriters, singers, singer-songwriters, <laughs> producers, engineers, mixers, multi-instrumentalists, all people in there that help each other out. And we have no specific genre. Um, I love this. It's a wonderful, wonderful track. I love the singer. I want to listen to this little piece. As Carl is saying, well, you can remix this song, the vocal, into any, um, pretty much any genre. Which, speaking of which, Dave, can you can we get the multi tracks this for the Academy? Please send them to Eric at producelikeapro dot com. Would absolutely love to be have people mix this. It's wonderful. Thank you, Dave. We do have some R&B in there, chill mode, and we have more coming, much more coming. Yeah, Airbud Crypto, there's about 100 multi-tracks from us, um, from Produce Like a Pro, and then how many user ones do you think we have? We've got to be creeping onto like 100 users. And about 100 user ones as well. So there's about 200 multi-tracks in there. And everybody's signed off that basically you can use any of these multi-tracks to build your own career. So build your own website, put the multi-tracks up to showcase your, your stuff. There's a lot of stuff like Amy Winehouse style as well in there as well. So for me, Dave, everything is there. All the parts are there. The song's great. Um, you know, it, it gets a little... I, I like when the backgrounds come in, there's a whaaa and the horns and everything, but I'd like to hear a little bit of differentiation. I'd like to... At the moment, the background vocals and the horns are just kind of one blob. And not bad, but... And sometimes I like things to glue, but I, I wish I knew there was they were there until I hear the horn at the end and I'm like, oh, that was going along, and then I know it's there next time. I think I'd like... I think on the production side, I, I may we would have wanted the horn to just move against the vocal ever so slightly. Um, if you don't get paid till the end of the week and you want to join, that's fine. Just send us an email. Just send one to support at producelikeapro.com and say, Warren sent you and you'd still like to get the special price and Warren said it was okay and, of course, it would be okay. I totally understand. We're doing this this special deal and I want to make sure that everybody who can and wants to come in can. So speaking of which, sales pitch. Sales pitch. Um, you, can, you can join at 50% off today and if you can't do it till the end of the week, send us an email. But, yeah. It's final summer sale offered, 50% off, down below. There's a link underneath the video. Go check it out. All right, keep listening. So for me, the horns are fantastic. The backgrounds are fantastic. I just wish there was a bit more separation with them, so I knew they were there. I, I like, there was a good comment about the um, <laughs> a sales pitch and a pitch. I should have talked like this, yes. Um, in my pitch, sales pitch. All right, okay. Um, I agree, the electric is a little jangly and a little EQ'd for me. Andy at Three Dog Recording Studio says it will be the best money spent. Thank you, Andy. I've been running for days, running day and night. Personally, I would... Uh, the, the, the guitar on the left-hand side f feels very in its place. Um, and then the one... The one on the right just feels like it's too tight to the middle and a little thin sounding. I mean, I, I would get that just tone to be just a little thicker, you know, just a little bit more, you know, deluxe 65, maybe a little bit of trem on it, a bit of verb. I think Tim, I don't know who he said, um, 
Yeah, Jennifer Lane saying in the guitar, the, wish there was more of a dusty swamp sound that took away from something. Yeah, I, I agree. Just like it, it needs to be just a little bit more because her voice is very lag like this. It's very kind of like, I don't know, sassy. It's kind of, yeah, you know, I like it. I love a vocal. The music needs to just, particularly the guitars, need to match that. So I think a thicker tone, um, I agree. Um, tremolo on it maybe on one of the two guitars, a decent amount of plate or definitely spring reverb on it. And I think it would be, just make it a bit more interesting. Again, quite often when we're talking about mixing, we're really talking about production. I've been running for days, running day and night. Try to change my hair, my... Peter's saying it's pretty balanced with the vocal. It is. It's definitely balanced with the vocal. Don't really have a, have a problem with it. I just think it's a tone thing. I think thicker, um, thicker sounding and um, more swampy, as Jane is saying. I've been running for days, running day and night. Try to change my hair, my clothes, my name. I mean, you could have one rake guitar just going with a trem on it. You know, you could have one moving and one that's just a trem sound. Greg's pointing out that the vocal could have some automation when it gets lost in a couple of places. Um, that bad, bad butterfly should be in the academy. Would it not be in the academy? No, I'm going to look that up. Uh, it's not in the academy. Um, it's not. It should be. That's David. Yeah, that should be in the academy. All anything we do on the channel should also be in the academy, Eric. So. Yeah, I think a rake guitar with tremolo, more um, spring reverb. Let's go to the end. Yeah, for, for me, the right hand, slightly right hand side guitar is is the worst offender. It just, it feels a little, um, it just needs, it needs some character. It needs to be thicker. I think the tiniest amount of overdrive, I don't mean metal. I just mean like kind of crunch, like the Stilux 65 just starting to, to clip just a little bit with some trem on it, like a light trem, a light spring reverb is suddenly going to make it more interesting. And I, personally, I would have one playing rhythm and one raking. Um, and if this was my production, I'd probably do a baritone guitar. You know, da -da 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 that that would be me. I think that would really take it over that. And if you don't have a baritone guitar, you can always grab a bass and play it on the D string. Just da -da 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 I like the solo. I think you've either got to add a little bit more compression to it in general so it doesn't dip, or probably more importantly, just get in there and automate sometimes where the notes get a little lost. Chill Mode said, uh, I joined on your word, sir. Great. Well, just get in there and get stuck in. Um, I don't know what, what your real name is, but Academy members, so we have a new member, Chill Mode. Point him to any kind of R&B influenced tracks. I know we have a lot of hip hop and stuff in there as well. Also, um, the Jeff Lorber multi-tracks would be really good for you because they're uh, a funky jazz track. I think you'll have a lot of fun mixing that. There's a lot of like borderline stuff with Steve Magora. Can you point? Can people point him to the Steve Magora tracks, um, the ones that are like that really super R&B kind of funk stuff? And there's more stuff like that coming. Um, and David uh, Secor, yes. Eric, did you find the Bad Bad Butterfly? Uh, I found the videos. I, I got them on tabs. 
So. Yeah, all of those. None of, none of those multi tracks in the in the academy. I gotta, I gotta double, double check. All double right. Check. More multi-tracks coming. Plus, Steve Magora, the great Steve Magora, keyboard player and background singer for Toto, um, every two weeks puts up new multi-tracks as well as all the other multi-tracks that comes up. So, pretty insane. Um, Travelling Light says Not Harley would be a good one for you on chill mode. There's more stuff. Um, bad, bad Eric Fly. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas says we aren't a cult. Really? Okay, maybe a little. Now, we always do the zombie thing. Join us. Join us. Anyway. David Crew, absolutely love it. If you could give us the multi tracks, I know you already said yes, that would be amazing. Great work. Get some of that guitar work done, automation. Um, and I think you'll have something really special. Great, great work. Love the voice. A couple of people mentioned about dirtying it up a little bit. I wonder on the vocal if you could put like a dirty slap on it, just a little bit, like a tape slap delay, slightly distorted, just underneath. Just underneath. All right, next up is Damien. Damien says, this is a new mix of my original, The Return. Let's see what you think of it. Great. Here we go. Firstly, absolutely wonderful, wonderful arrangement and a great song. I, I love hearing guitar playing like that. Um, beautiful melody, great playing, musically wonderful. It's it's a really indicative of just what an incredible community there is here, that we have this kind of level of musicianship. There's some wonderful guitar players in there. Darren Ross is one of those guitar players. I don't see him on today. He's just phenomenal. Um, 
It's really enjoyable. So, um, as Lindsay says, felt thoroughly enjoyed it. And Lindsay, you're coming up next. Oh no, there's a different Lindsay. Lindsay, are you Lindsay Miller? Uh, do, 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 do. It's. Um, are you the same Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay Ronane and Lindsay Miller? I don't know if it's if you're the same person. Uh, yes, yeah, I am. Yes. Okay. Good. Anyway, so you're up next. Uh, I'm excited to hear your music. So uh, a co- few comments that were going down. Um, I think the first one is um, the, with the drums, I think it gets a little splashy in the cymbals and it makes it sound, a couple people said messy. Just a little bit there. It just could be tucked a little bit on the cymbals. It could be tucked down a little bit. Um, the snare is all about the snap. It's clop, 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 clop. That's kind of docking sound. This is where we get very, very with a capital V, subjective. Because one person's really good snare sound is another person's doesn't like it. Yeah, I'm hearing the kick really well. I think the thing about the kick is, is it's shelved around about 80. If we grab a C4, um, so it's thumping in there, but there's no point to it, so you don't really feel it. I definitely hear it, but let's have a quick listen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to 40 here. Let's have a listen. Uh, there's some 40 going on. The bass itself is it is not a huge amount going on. It's really starting to define about 200. I feel like if you gave some point to that kick, a little little snap on it, I think everybody would hear the kick better because there's some, definitely some faulty there. I mean, I don't expect you all to hear this on your systems, but... Yeah, a bit more of the beta sound, as, uh, as Russell's saying. Eternal Wolf Music saying, yes, a spike in the high mid would bring the kick out more, definitely. But there's some good thump going on in there. So some good thump, but just give us a little bit of point. It definitely feels a little shh. We've got to be careful with the acoustics, electrics, uh, cymbals and stuff. It can get very crowded in that sort of 3 to 7K, I would say. I was going to say 3 to 5 is where it is the most sensitive, but there's a lot of 7 going on as well. It gets a little washy, as not saying. Michael's saying 60, 60% Satriani and 40% Mark Nofner, which are all great things. Thank you, Sadrine. I really appreciate it. I presume you're a, a, a vocal producer, you're a singer yourself, because your name is Sadrine's uh, Vox Services. Yeah, I agree with Eric. So Eric's saying, match the low energy of the bass a bit better with the kick, maybe add some click to the kick. So yes. Go, yeah, so some clickiness on the kick, but a little bit of grind on the bass could be interesting. A little sort of 3K and a little tiny bit of saturation. So it's a little bit grindy, like less of a do do do, more of a gang 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 gang. Just a little, what would, uh, what would uh, Christian call it? The dangle dangle. He would call it the dangle dangle, dangle dangle. <laughs> I think that would help it rock. So more clickiness on the kick. More dangle dangle on the bass, so a little bit of 3K, a little bit of bite, and I think it would just make it rock a little bit more. 
Yeah, Tim's saying maybe the acoustic guitars could be muted to highlight the organ sort of break. I just think there's a lot of 3 to 7K going on in guitars, acoustics, uh, keys, cymbals, and it just gets a little bit messy there. And I think that's what people are saying when they say it's messy. Now, the snare is a, definitely a good defined snare sound, but this is where it gets subjective. Is it the snare that you want? So Christopher's saying it a bit hollow, a bit roomy. So that's where maybe the snare can come forward a little bit, which could be a combination of things. Um, it can have a little bit of seven on it, but I think because it's got a knocking sound, it also is lacking a bit of body. So I think that trick we were talking about with the Poltec, maybe going to 100 hertz and boosting it and just bringing up some lows, some like 150, 200 in the snare, we think would be really useful here. Eugene's not a fan of the snare, but again, you see, it's not a bad snare, it's a specific snare. I think more body and a little bit more bite. Mini, San, Mini Man says, I'm very impressed with the musicianship in Produce Like a Pro community. There's a lot of great musicians, but don't be put off. If you're not a musician or a producer, an engineer or a mixer, but you don't play instruments, don't be put off. There's plenty of things to do in here. You don't have to be a phenomenal player, but you're right. There's some amazing musicianships. Yeah, for me, there's a lot of lot of that high mids going on around, but there's not like any... I, I think I want to hear more body in instruments on the left and the right. Um, you know, just on the left and the right to just really help this sound fuller. There was a good comment about it just doesn't sound quite full. I agree. Some more body, some instruments on the left and the right that help support the center and the lead stuff would be phenomenal. Great, great work. But um, Damien, thank you ever so much for sending it in. Wonderful song, wonderful playing. I really appreciate you sharing your music musicianship with us. If you could send us that track to mix, that would be amazing. I know the Academy members would love to do some stuff on that. Um, wonderful work. Lindsay's up next, and we're going to do another giveaway. So, um, oh, we're going to do a dumb one. Let's do a dumb one, an easy one. We did, uh, what did we do last time? Favorite plugin. Let's do, what is your, how do you record? Is it, uh, do you use a DAW? If so, what DAW do you use? Is it Pro Tools? Is it Reaper? Is it Cubase? Is it Digital Performer? Is it Reason? Is it, what, whatever, what is it? What DAW do you use? And if you're not using a DAW and you're just recording memos, you're using your iPad, you're using your tablet, you are still do, working on one inch tape, two inch tape, quarter inch tape, four track cassette, what is it? What do you, use to record in what is your medium that you use to record it no wrong answer and please hit the like button please 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 hit the like button and so let's go over to Lindsay and Lindsay says hi Lindsay Lindsay says Lindsay's a wonderful musician and we do have to do some things together we keep talking about it um, we're waiting for Lewitt to bring out their drum package because we've got lots of incredible drummers in the academy. And what I want to be able to do is get them the drum mic package so we can have our academy members play drums on tracks and be on the channel as well. And Lindsay is one of those. Uh, Lindsay says, this song I recorded a mix by a local team band called The Wits. They wrote and produced a track and I recorded it and mixed it in my studio with very little equipment. Well, first of all, congratulations. That's amazing. The boys were kind enough to let me record them for practice and I had a friend master it. It'd be great to hear feedback as this was my first proper project recording and mixing from scratch. Thank you. Yay! That's amazing. So Lindsay, this is her first proper recording from scratch and she's sharing it with all of us. How freaking awesome is that? Love it. Thank you. Thank you for just throwing yourself into the deep end and doing that. Really appreciate it, Lindsay. Let's have a listen. I'm 
Pretty fantastic. First of all, Lindsay, just just remind everybody that is Lindsay's first full production, full recording and mixing and mastering, and just absolutely superb. Um, and you know, brave is a big word, but it's very brave to like do your first full recording and production and then share it with the world. I mean, we've got three hundred and fifty people currently on listening to this. Plus, this video will go on to get ten or twenty thousand views. So, God bless you. Um, for doing that. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely amazing. Oh, if you haven't already, please hit the like button. I'd really, really appreciate that. Um, give if nothing else. Give it to for Lindsay for sharing her first production with us all. So first of all, I really like the song. I mean, it started off with like Peter Hook going into the cure with that baseline sound. Really great sound. Yeah, it's almost like... It's trees. Run away, run away. Not that I'm a Cure fan or anything. Only seen them about a billion times. Yeah, it's like Forest meets Peter Hook. You know, uh, Joy Division, New Order. I mean, it's all my favourite things. I think, to be honest, you know, for, for somebody that's the first time they've ever recorded and mixed drums, yeah, there's definitely things people are saying about the drum mix that could be better. But let's be honest, I don't know about you, Was this? did anybody have the first time they ever recorded drums have them sound this good? Love and Rockets is a good reference too, yep. I mean, really, really wonderful. I love the toms. You've got the really, really clean sounding. I think having a, you know, I've often said this to people 
if I was starting again, knowing what I know now, I would have learned drums first. Yep. I would have learned drums and piano. Piano, especially if you're using an electric piano or, you know, a synth or whatever, something that's perfectly in tune will develop your ear much quicker than being a guitar player. Because when I grew up as a guitar player, I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer, so that meant, you know, one out of 50 guitar players I knew had a tuner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like getting a Boss tuner. Where I grew up, I didn't have any money, so I certainly couldn't afford a Boss tuner because that was more than my guitar and amp was worth. But... You know, you don't develop an ear as quickly as you do with uh, a fixed free, you know, fixed tuning of a, of a keyboard. And then the second most important thing is when you're developing your ear for, or just as important, harmony and melody, and um, is drums. So good drummers are really make great producers because they understand arrangements and grooves and feels. So if I was doing this again, and if you're new or you want, you're thinking about learning instruments, learn keys and drums. I'm a guitar player and I love it. Don't get me wrong. That's all I ever wanted to be, but I wish I had been a better keyboard player and drummer. Yep. Never say never. I suppose I just got to practice more. Anyway, um, so on the drum sound, what I would do, Lindsay, I think it's pretty fantastic. A little bit more body on the snare, uh, maybe a tiny bit more bite. That's always could happen. I would parallel drum mix this. I would have the drums as they sound here. Let's, have, do, let's do a quick experiment. The kick is a little lost, so the kick needs to come up in general. Okay, so I'm going to do a little experiment here. Do, 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 do. So, what we've got is Lindsay's drums here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to grab something. And we're going to grab, um, we're going to grab, um, let's do something generic. Because I was about to grab some fancy plug-in and realize that's not going to help anybody. So let's just do a regular, good old-fashioned compressor. And what's the cheapest comes free with Pro Tools? What do they call that now? I can never remember the names. Is it... Oh, it's Dyne 3, isn't it? So this is the comes free with your... This could be anybody's. This is, happens to be Avid's, but it could be whatever DAW in. So this is our drum mix. So we're just annihilating it a bit, to be quite frank. We're annihilating it. This compressor itself is introducing too many, too many artifacts. That's not... Uh, Lindsay's recording that is the compressor unfortunately right but now let's pull it down let's put in Lindsay's original and the reason why I'm doing this is imagine you have a drum mix a two mix now we're going to put in her drums and I'm going to blend this in so here is just the drums on its own hear that energy come up And I'm going to mute it, bring it on and off. So what we've got is we've got a parallel drum mix that Martin's saying is bringing in energy. So that immediately, I think, will lift the whole mix. Now, obviously, if I did it over the whole mix... But it's just straightforward like that. And luckily, thank you, Lindsay, for having a two-bar section looped to the front with nothing else on it so we could demonstrate that. So I would get into your, um, Lindsay, get into your drum mix there and just do, a, you know, 
just do a parallel drum mix with it. Just destroy it. Get tons and tons of energy going in there. It could be noise. It could be like, it could just be horrible and ugly, but you just blend it back in and it'll be great. Oh, Dan Coe. Woo. The great Daniel Coe is in the house. Howdy, Daniel Coe. How have you been? It's been a few, feels like a few decades. It's probably been a handful of years. Danko is uh, is also an educator now, aren't you? You're teaching at school, um, and we you, Dan, we need to do some more stuff together. So Danko is also an incredible string arranger. Like he did the string arrangements for us on the last Aerosmith record. He's stupidly talented, and also as Jack um, Jack Douglas would say, he 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 sounds like a corporation. His name is Daniel Co or Danko. Um, so new from Danco is the string arrangement. Um, no, really, really super talented. Dan, email me, email me. Let's do some stuff. Really incredibly talented string arranger and audio educator. Airbug Crypto says, Dan Co, any quick advice on how to get started with arranging for strings? See, I just threw you under the bus there. I'm actually going to listen to this on the whole song. That whole energy of that is making a huge difference. I feel like it's just, it's one of the things that we're very, very hesitant to do because we live in this kind of um, sort of BS world, to be honest, where we're told that by countless people, you know, you hear me rail about this often. I, I really don't like being negative. It's not a negative thing, but we get told that, you know, everybody in the 60s and the 70s was a genius and you kids don't know what you're doing. We all hear that. And the thing is, is like, I'm friends with the guys that made those records. I've made records with them. And I can tell you, they compress the schnizzle out of everything really, really aggressively. So much so that when you bring up multitracks, it's like blobs of sound. And so by doing that, plus it was hitting tape and they had tr tons of transformers and tons of tubes, like saturation and coloring going on. So that when you bring up those amazing albums that we all consider to be the greatest albums ever made, you bring them up on fader and they sound done. There isn't almost zero mixing. It didn't. It wasn't the culture we have now, where it's all like a bunch of DIs and virtual instruments and a mixer like creates the thing. They were committing to sound. Now that might not be possible for many of us. You know, I'm lucky. I've got lots and lots of tubes, and I've got U47 and RCA mics and C12s and Poltex and blah 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 blah. All this stuff and a tape machine. So I've got all of these advantages. But a lot of the time when we're mixing in the box. You know, we're given stuff that hasn't gone through all of this big, beautiful, fat stuff. When we demo microphones, for instance, we use our, I don't know if it's in camera, our Audient ID44. I'm talking through it at the moment. You're listening through it. We use affordable interfaces because we're demoing something and we want you to hear what it would actually sound like in your home. I don't, I'm not opinionated about this stuff because I want you to make up your own mind, which is why I give you the multitrack so you can listen for yourself. So we tend... We have to remember that um, in ye olden days of these great recordings, there was a lot of coloration going on. So when you're coming to mix these days, you need to sort of create that for yourself. So doing like parallel drum mixing, parallel mixes, you know, um, Andrew Sheps calls it the rear bus. But when I worked with Dave Jordan in 98, he was doing that on the SSL console. So for with... So there's two master mix bus sessions and he was annihilating one of the master mix buses and then blending it up underneath the other one. So that really, um, that really is a big, big deal. So like blending the energy of, of, a, uh, of the mix back into the mix can be a really, really great thing. As I say, Andrew Sheps calls it the, the rear bus, but back in the 80s and stuff like that, Dave Jordan was doing it on an SSL and he just had two faders two master faders and he was able to blend the two together uh, george i've never worked with oasis that would have been wonderful i was playing in bands in the 90s that i'm gonna say i'm a gen xer so i was in bands in the in the 90s and at the end of the mid uh, end of 90s that's when i was 
produ uh, producing, but I was also produ producing my own stuff. Lindsay says, um, geez, I'm trying to make the, Lindsay says, uh, sounded great with the crush. Yep. So try some stuff with the crush and blend it back in. Um, Lindsay, I mean, if you're down and the band would be down, it'd be great to share those multi-tracks. I know I'm being cheeky, um, but that would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Lindsay, thank you ever so much as a new as a new producer, engineer, and mixer, and a great drummer, obviously, sharing your work with us. Um, it really means a lot. It helps so much. We get to have these wonderful conversations because of it. Um, yeah, that radio, uh, radio, radio guy says... Uh, I hate that too much compression is a bad thing. Um, everything has to be pure and uncompressed. Not really, not all the time. Usually it should be before high fidelity. So it just isn't true, though. That's the point. It's like people are talking out of their butt. They're pretending that, you know, Aerosmith made these records in the 70s just by going into a room and like, oh, my God, we're going to record a hit. Oh, my God, I've got 10 minutes and it's a hit. It just wasn't like that. They go into the studio for months. Bands were getting... Steely Dan made some of the greatest sounding records ever over several months. Months and months and months of recording. Tons and tons of recording. Spending ages on mixes and minutiae, writing and automating. This whole idea that everybody used to be a genius back then is just, it was work. It's always work. So we try to reduce it to the basic thing of like, what's the work that you have to do to get your mixes and your recordings to sound better? And it's teachable. It's not just geniuses. A lot of the people that came up and in Abbey Road, John, John, uh, um, John was telling us about this. It's like, uh, he, he came in and he was 16 years old and he was taught all of his incredible techniques, mainly through osmosis of being around it over many, many decades. And so it's not waking up a genius one day, you know, I have, I know I have that video called no one wakes up a genius and it's just talking about that stuff. So anyway, it's work. And that's what we're here to do is to help each other out. Thank you, Lindsay, for sending us that thing. And next up is Lem Mido. Lem, Lem Mido, sorry, did I say Lem? Lem Mido. Lem is a very good friend and a wonderful, wonderful person. And I'm excited to see what Lem has sent us. We'll do a couple more mixes and then we're going to productions and then we're going to do another giveaway. Um, Lem says, Hi, Eric. This is a track I mixed for Katie Shea. Recorded in Nashville with some session musicians. I tracked all the vocals then mixed. Mastered by Pete Lyman at Infrasonic Sound. We went for an old school country sound. Marvellous. And it's called Chasing Hank. Let's check it out.
Wow, what an absolutely wonderful, wonderful song. I mean, first of all, Lem, thank you ever so much for sharing it. I suppose my first question is, as ever, is can we get the multi tracks? <laughs> I love it. We got some. We got a lot of country in there, but we could always use some more. Um, this is a fantastic. As you say, wonderful musicianship. The the violin, the fiddle player was superb. The guitar player is superb. The drums and bass are fantastic. Uh, somebody said they would have preferred flat. Um, yeah, I know it's a fiddle. I was being silly. Not. I was at the Grammy Museum a couple of days ago, and they have a, a, a violin on the wall, and they were like the evolution of the fiddle, and it was and it was of course talking about country. So yeah, there was no definitely no violin <laughs> reference there. It was all fiddle. I mean, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, job. I re I'm really, really super, super impressed with it. Lem, you did some fantastic things. It's interesting. Um, I I think uh, mentioned by a couple of people, and I'm I'm, I'm sort of in, in agreement, as our ex president would say, in agreement. I'm I, I I agree with everybody. I think the vocal is superb, but it could do with some automation. Sometimes she's a little in the track, and sometimes she's not. I don't think it's you know, necessarily additional compression that's necessary. I think it's a little Al Schmidtness. I think it needs Al's kind of like, you know, picking up syllables and words and pushing up tail ends of phrases. It's um, it's not a problem at all, but it just feels like as a pop country song, which is what it is. It's not like super clean modern pop country, but it's classic pop country. I just want to hear the vocal like a little bit more present. I know it's already mixed and mastered. Totally understand. Pete Lyman is one of my favorite mastering engineers and an absolutely stand up incredible guy. But yeah, I think a little bit more volume automation on the vocal would have just put it over the edge for me. Otherwise, pretty fantastic. I want to listen to that intro again. Now, Tim, I don't think it's the mastering because the vocal, I think, has to be, you know, prevalent at all times. And it's only subtle. Yes, and the middle tower will get that line coming in just needs to be up over it. I didn't work on uh, Don't Want to Miss a Thing. I worked on uh, the last album they did, which is 2011, 2012. So I hear her there. Um, I still think a little bit of automation, but obviously that first line over the band. So it could be a combination. Push the vocal up, and then uh, the steel there should just duck a little bit under the vocal. So duck the steel a dB, bring the vocal up a dB, and I think that would be perfect. Yeah, the vocal could just come up when it starts getting a little busier. I think it's a, enough of a pop song that the vocal, um, you know, could be up, you know, a dB in general. But I think it's about automating the vocal here. It's such an interesting song with such phenomenal musicianship that there's a lot of ear candy in there. But I think the vocal needs to sit above that ear candy. Otherwise, absolutely wonderful. And you know I'm going to ask Lem, can, you, can we get the multitracks? Can we get the multitracks? Can we get the multitracks? Amazing work. Lem has been an Academy member now, I don't know, maybe since the beginning, really close to the beginning, and it's just done, been absolutely wonderful what he's done, and he's helped so many people. Me in particular, he's, got, he's a great guy with really good instincts who has incredible advice. Uh, always listen to his advice. Fantastic. Um, Gavin is up next. Thank you, Lem. 
please, can we have the multi-tracks? Gavin says, I was literally just bouncing a mix of the track I finished recording this evening when the email came through. We sent the email last night saying, send us some mixes for Monday. And this is the response we got. It's amazing. I've never posted here before, but the timing was too apt, so here goes nothing. Here's an original track I wrote uh, to chuck into the pile. What an amazing community that we asked the night before, and Eric gets up in the morning and they're all here. Pretty incredible. Eric's looking bewildered. I think it was pretty... I'm, I'm impressed, Eric. You impressed? Uh, I'm always impressed. He's always impressed. He, I, I, haven't, I haven't forced him to do a joke of the day today so far. We've just been having good momentum here. Although, I, I still want more cup of tea. Oh, yeah, Where's my yeah. cup of tea? I want a cup of tea. All right, so here's Gavin's Once We're Fools. Once We're Fools, sorry. Eugene wants Eric to do the mix critique and me to make the tea. <laughs> you want to? I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, hey, no, no, Eric. So, what would you do, Eric? Uh... <laughs> what would you do? What would you do differently? What? Huh? Um, I, I would. Fantastic mix. <laughs> Fantastic mix. All right, next. <laughs> No, it's a it's a wonderful mix. Keep listening. I want to listen back. I love I love the chord sequence. I really like that A minor. This. In the chorus.
Yeah, it's I, I love the simplicity of the song and the fact that wh when they've got this kind of production, you 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 can take a simple chord sequence like that 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 A minor G in the verse and then the chorus the C A minor F G, and you can let like beautiful things like ninths like the B ringing out and some of those chords just add a texture to it. What can happen is like that that can be beautiful when done like this when Gavin's done it, but when you end up you know, then overdubbing 55 other parts, the subtlety of those beautiful open strings ringing on, on different chords gets lost. It starts to become just like kind of a, a mess of things. So I love the production. It's a really, really simple, beautiful, well done. Let's have a listen again, just throughout the beginning here. Nice, nice, nice arrangement stuff there where where he's letting, he's just doing really logical stuff. It's not massive at the front. It's just enough for a little guitar melody, which I like. I love how it repeats over the different chords, after over the two chords. Um, that, but then just strips back to let the vocal come through. Let's go. Kick and snare's lovely. Just that you can hear enough bottom snare, but still enough body. Really tasty. And it leaves the light on. Standing in the dark. Lovely announcement of that acoustic coming in, and then the bass line changes up. This is really, really nice production. Standing in the dark And the echoes Fill the silence Little piano melody, nice ear candy, maybe a little brighter come up. Love that vocal harmony there, really tasteless. So, for me, I want to lift on maybe an arpeggiated stereo guitar or something. Yeah, it's it, it's almost absolutely perfect. If I just get rid of my mute omatic thing here. Sorry, can you turn the amp up, please?
So something as simple as that. Thank you, Eric. Something as simple as that, just like a little lift, just to help. It's it's absolutely superb production, though. Really, really good. Just a really simple thing. Just, just a beautiful song, beautiful arrangement, meaning like subtle little things like that can really, really help. The little piano line, tiny bit brighter, pull it up a little bit. Um, a couple of people have said, I didn't really hear too much on the pitch correction. I think we're living in this world now, unfortunately for all of us, where we're so used to it. I was sitting with, I can't say who it is, but I was sitting listening to multi-tracks Oh, I can't say who it was as well. But anyway, listen to multi-tracks of a really, really incredibly famous record, probably the biggest selling record of the 70s. You can guess what that is. And um, the the vocal is really super, super pitchy in many, many places on the biggest selling album of the 70s. Far more pitchy than this. It's just a catch-22. I, I, I know our ears are tuned to autotune now, and it, it is a little, gets a little, little, little crazy, you know? Um, but I think in general, I love, absolutely love this. I mean, it sounds great as it is. I'm just finding subtle things to improve. Um, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful job. You should be very proud of it. I think mix-wise, maybe a little MV2, Tom was saying on the bass, could just control some of the stuff that's jumping out. Um, you know, um, kick and snare could do with a slightly more even, uh, evenness. Um Autotune can save something. It can save an incredible performance where somebody has gone sharp too much, but the attitude was there. It's There's nothing wrong with any of these techniques because they were always used. You know, famously, Dave Gilmore, high note, slow the tape down, hit the high note. Beatles, everybody. Everybody did these things. Always did. Mike Oldfield talked about when he was doing tubular bells that the, some of the parts were really p difficult to play, so he had to slow the tape down and play an octave down. We've all done things like this. There was everybody always, quote unquote, cheated. Thank you ever so much, Connor. Uh, you know, everybody is always, quote unquote, cheated. It's, but it's all just about like how you use the tools. Um, it's, it's if you use them just by sight and just do it like that and you're not listening for when something can be corrected, that's when it's different. Things have always been done. Tapes have been slowed down, all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, comped 100 vocals to get a good take. You know, it's all been done. The question is, is like, use it tastefully. Wonderful, wonderful work, Gavin. I'm really impressed. Please let us have those multi-tracks. Um, yeah, wonderful. All right, next up is Roy. Is that correct? Yep. And Roy says, Hi, Eric and all. Here's a track called Rubber Pancake Blues from my upcoming instrumental project, Blue Dark Hues. Enjoy. Excellent. Very excited to hear. And uh, let's do our last giveaway. So you can go to the page listed down below. First of all, obviously, $99 special deal, 50% off. Um, to join the academy and do these things with us every week. So please click on the link. If you're not already a member, please join us. There's wonderful, lots of wonderful people in there. It's pretty amazing. Um, and we do this all the time. So you're going to get to do more of this. Um, and you can obviously also click on a link down below where you can enter to win a lifetime membership and a Pro Mix Academy Everything Bundle, which is like 40 different mentors worth of stuff. So please join that down below. So click on that if you haven't already. How do I how do I participate in submitting traps for review? Well, um, Roy, so when you're an Academy member, there is a forum in there. There's a lot of people will show you how to do it, but you can go in there. There's a private Discord group as well where we discuss this stuff. Um, so, and as Tim said, join us, join the cult of people being good to each other. <laughs> it's like, there's no leaders here. You know, it's all, it, 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 it's a place of equality. It's definitely like, you know, join us. There's definitely no, yeah, there's no like one way or the high, my way's the highway. 
Um, yeah, and Christopher says, if you go to the Discord, everybody, uh, it goes, it's a nice cult. Uh, yeah. So, um, we are Borg, we are one. Uh, Andy says, best, best music community, thank you. One of us, one of us. Will there be a cowbell forum on Discord? Start it, Tom. Start the cardboard. Um, um, thank you, Jason. All right. So please, if you haven't already joined, join us. Please hit the like button and let's do a giveaway. So what have we done? We did div we did favorite plugin. We did what what do you what medium you record on DAW? I suppose I'm going to ask this one again. I always ask this one, but I actually want to know speakers or headphones. Uh, what do you mix on and what headphones or what speakers? So if you mix on speakers, just say I use the Callies, I use the Neumanns, I use the Genelex, I use the, you know, uh, um, uh, Proax, Focals, um, Adams, you know, what speakers do you use? And if you, and it, even if it's both, tell us what they are. What are the headphones and what are the speakers? If it's speakers, what do you use? No wrong answer. Just let us know. Hit the like button, please, as well. So please hit the like button and please tell us. And and, um, and at the end of this, um, uh, um, Eric will pick somebody at random. We can do a favorite album. We can do that. We can do that. We might maybe we'll do a bonus one at the end. All right, let's listen to Pancake Blues by Roy. Sorry, Rubber Pancake Blues.
Wow. Well, to say that is eclectic would be the understatement of the decade. I mean, that is the most insanely eclectic piece of music I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, incredible. Um, I'd love to know a little bit. Somebody says it needs a kazoo and then a finger bell. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is really, really incredible. Um, I don't have any comment on it beyond the fact that the reason why I say that is because I feel like the mixing, it, it all makes sense. It's such an artistic piece. There's no real, where do you, where do you draw, where do you, where do you create like a line and say, it's got to be this, that or the other? Because the reality is when you're doing something that's so eclectic, it by nature is pushing the boundaries. There's a couple of times where I feel like, oh, the drums could be a little bit more impactful here and there. Totally. But it's, it, it is a really insanely eclectic piece of music which goes between all kinds of genres and instruments. Now, I do have the same question that many of you asked. How much of it's recorded with microphones and how much of it is actually, you know, virtual instruments? Um, it sounds predominantly virtual to me because it's so clean and really recorded. But if there's a lot of real stuff in there, I'd love to know. Um, you know, it, I like it. I, I, I like it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I love anybody that pushes the boundaries. I've said this many, many times. For my crazy mind where I'm thinking of 10,000 things at once, I mean, look at it. You know, I'm answering questions, talking to you, thinking about this song, doing, you know, playing guitar, all this stuff. For my crazy mind that, like, is always multitasking 100 things, I like music like this. It keeps me challenged. Stuff that calms me down and really makes me think is usually pretty mathematical. I love classical music great classical music. I love jazz and I love prog. Now, don't get me wrong. I can listen to The Clash any day of the week and I can listen to punk and post-punk and Joy Division and all kinds of stuff. I love it all. I love all kinds of music. But the thing that really motivates me is the challenge of something. The challenge can be the sonic characteristics, taking some risks sonically. It can be time things. It can be sometimes the simplicity of something and just simple things changing, subtle things changing that just blow your mind. And I feel like that is what's going on here. I think uh, this is somebody uh, like Roy who's got a similar mind and he's, he's trying really hard to keep the interest going and try lots of different styles and stuff. And I applaud it. I applaud it. Um, do, is it a three and a half minute, three minutes, 20 pop song? Heck no. Will it be interesting for Roy to take his talent in all these different genres and focus it on one? Yes. But when I think about it, you think of like um, Genesis being teenagers putting out their first album, what, 68? And then you look at uh, Peter Gabriel doing all his solo records and then he's like 34 or 35, something like that when he does so. So he's now into his third decade of making music, 60s, 70s, now in the 80s and he's still only like 35 years old and he does so and does one of the greatest albums of all time, of course, with Daniel Lanois. So here you are, you have one of the greatest albums ever made done by somebody who came from this crazy prog rock classical kind of world. So I love this because I feel like take this stuff that you do, Roy, and apply it to a pop music world and you are you could really win. I love this. Um, I love that first date. You, love, you don't like that first uh, Genesis record? I love it. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I love I love all the Genesis stuff. Um, yeah, they were like teenagers. They were at Charterhouse. Um, they were just so. They were just kids, like just doing, pushing the boundaries. Love it. Um, all right, last but no means least, who won the who won the uh, giveaway? It was Dave C, who uses Sennheiser and Sony headphones. He didn't specify which which uh, model number, but also Cali speakers. Oh, Cali, which, which models? LP6s, LP8s, INs? He didn't put down. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Jonathan King, yes. Yes, Jonathan King. Um, but Jonathan King was amazing. He discovered a lot of incredible artists. Um, all right, last but no means least is Robert Lanter and just says original t tune. Looks like he's playing a beautiful 335 there. All right, this has been amazing. So don't forget, you can enter to win. Um, as Karen says, you can join the Academy. It's $99, a special deal for today. So you can join. Uh, you can also enter to win a membership. And this is our last song with Robert Lanter and its original tune. Let's check it out.
Please join us. Join us. Here we go. I'm already loving this. We were asked earlier from a new member, do we have any R&B-inspired stuff? And here we go. This is so good. Robert, I've already, I'm only one bar in and I want the multi-tracks. <laughs> How do you enter, Eugene? Um, there is a enter the, directly below the, um, the video is an enter to win one of three lifetime memberships and Promix Academy Everything Bundles. So click on there. And of course, you can join us at Produce Like a Pro.
Oh, beautiful, Robert. What? How beautiful is that? Again, what incredible talent we have in here. And you know, Robert, I'm going to ask about the multi-tracks. Um, I agree with Karen, um, and a few people sort of mentioned it. The drums are a little overcooked. They're a little compressed. I'm assuming they're addictive or easy drummer or, or one of those kinds of softwares. And just the extra compression makes the cymbals just a little too squishy and squashy for me. Um, I think it just a uh, – don't get me wrong. If you're going to parallel or compress something like that, maybe – remove the symbols from it and just make it kick and snare and a couple of other things, you know, the toms or whatever and just, and rooms or whatever and bring them in and squash them, but just, but not the overheads and maybe not the rooms if the rooms have got a ton of symbols bleed into them. But generally speaking, just a really, really wonderful, wonderful song and great performances. And yeah, I love it a lot. That's my main thing. I agree with Karen. I think the drums are just overcooked. Um, Tom's saying he would love to play drums on it. Well, Tom, this, why don't you ask Robert? Let's get the multi-tracks. Tom, play some drums on it. Um, we have a lot of great drummers in the academy. That would be fantastic. But just as a song, Jason's saying a 2.5 to 3K dip on the cymbals. Yeah, I agree. It gets a little little aggressive in there. But just generally speaking, as a song, it's an absolute masterpiece. It's just really beautiful. It's got that Larry Colton kind of, you know, Room 335 album kind of feel. It's a little bit maybe more 80s and 90s, a little less 70s. But just an absolute masterpiece and just shows how much talent there is in the Academy. Roy, uh, Roy, sorry, Robert, please, 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 Robert, can we get the, um, can we get the multi-tracks for this? It would be amazing. Um, Patrick says, bass tone was gorgeous, sat right in there. I realized it. Yeah. So don't forget, you can join the Academy. Please hit the like button on your way out. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, share, join the Academy. It's only, it's half price today. This is what we do every single week. We have fun. We talk about music. We listen to stuff. We do other people's mixes. We do our own multi-tracks. Like I said, there's about 100 of other people's. There's about 100 of our own, and it's growing all the time. Steve McGora from Toto add is, adds one every two weeks. We add one once a month, plus all, the, all of the multi-tracks from YouTube go up on there. It's insane how much stuff is going on. It's really incredible incredible thing and david reminds eric please 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 don't forget bad bad butterfly eric there's probably lots of that period that didn't get in there uh yes there's a page with all the multi-track multi -track downloads on them you know that we do it every year yeah, yeah. so you can go back there and see what's not in the academy yeah, yeah, it's yeah there's yeah there's a lot a lot of multi-tracks um these these are the droids you're looking for. These are not the droids you're looking for. Join us, super community, super supportive, says Karen. Karen and uh, Melissa was here earlier, are two of our admin, who are two of the most level-headed and smartest people I've ever met, as well as both being incredibly talented. Karen is an incredible bass player who has uh, some pretty, pretty amazing credits, but she wouldn't admit it, and she's too modest, um, is a mainstay of the Los Angeles music scene. Not, not that I'm trying to age you, Karen, but she has been here for a while and has played in lots of great bands out here and continues to play and write and record and is a wonderful, and is my neighbor, lives like a street over. Um, and um, she says, don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> no, Karen is amazing. And then, of course, Melissa, who was in earlier, is also um, is pretty badass, has got her own studio, built her own equipment, um, is incredibly smart, was in the Luna video that we did at Sunset Sound. Um, and again, is very level-headed and very smart. And um, Lem also is one of our, um, Lem Meador is another one of our admin who's also very level-headed, very smart. Um, and so there's lots of really good people in here who are really going to help guide you and uh, we're big fans. Um, yeah. And then wonderful Academy members. I mean, all these great people. Anita's amazing. Sven, um, everybody. I don't want to start pointing at anybody. It's kind of unfair. There's so many incredible. Uh, yeah, Melissa, as uh, Karen is saying, is very knowledgeable. So come and join us. Um, it's a wonderful community. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll do more of these. These are fun to do. Um, we've got to do another live mix one. Uh, this Friday for Academy members is going to be pre-recorded because I'm away. And also following Friday, I'm away for a week and a half. We're going to do two, Eric. We're going to pencil that in with the three 
demos that we have to get done in the next two or three days as well. But I did stay late yesterday and finished editing the drum track with the acoustic, so we can do some electrics today. Nice. we got a lot to do, yeah. a lot of work to do, but at least it's making music. At least we get to do things that we love. Thank you, everyone. Please join us if you haven't already. Enter to win. So long, farewell, la vida, say au revoir, adios, tutsines, uh, uh, ciao, adios, adio, um... Um, Avidisen, um, oh, tschüss, goodbye.